remembering our baptism, remembering God's promise to us in Christ. We continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God who overcomes violence. We'll try it this way. God who overcomes violence by your love. We confess that we are born immersed in the corruption of this world. As we grow and develop, we cannot help but be willingly infected by this world's greed, lust, and pride. Violence is all around us and within us, and it threatens to overwhelm us. We ask you to heal us, for Jesus' sake, with your love and forgiveness. God hears your confession and speaks to each of you his healing word of forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, who poured out your love upon the Gentiles through Peter's preaching, have mercy on us. O Christ, who was born of God to overcome the world and all that threatens to overwhelm us, have mercy on us. O Lord, who has loved us and made a home for us together with you in the Father's love, have mercy on us and grant us your peace. Amen. Dear people of God, the Lord be with you. We pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we continue to hear God's word. First reading tonight is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does, does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know that what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after, bap after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did in both the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with them after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. 
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle tonight is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there, for there are the three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Jesus says, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We hear these words of our Lord Jesus. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last Sunday we heard Jesus tell us, I am the vine, you are the branches. This night we read, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. These things I have spoken to you, that in me, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. May the Lord bless our continued hearing and pondering of his word. Dear friends in Christ, when choices are being made, choices about good things, good opportunities, good jobs, or a good team, it's good to be chosen. In the draft, I didn't see that much of the draft, the NFL draft, but the one person being chosen by the team that he had always, he was really hoping to get chosen by and that had been, he had been a fan of for his entire life. Somewhere along the line in my growing up years in grade school when we'd be choosing up sides for soccer or softball or some other game, somewhere along the line things changed from somebody saying, okay, we'll take Glenn, <laughs> to me becoming eventually as I got older at grade school there in Lee, Nebraska, to being one of the first ones chosen, if not being able to be the one doing the choosing. It feels good to be chosen for something that is good and beneficial. It doesn't feel so good, though, to be chosen to be bullied or ridiculed just because of who you are or who you have served and helped along the way. Just the other day, I heard a person on the radio talking about the shame of how they have been slandered and bullied for no other reason but that they had worked and helped with a certain political campaign. This person was saying that people are trying to intimidate and scare people from wanting to work with our president. Obviously, we would all hope that such a thing isn't true because we would always want the best people possible working with our president, whoever the president may be. But the person was speaking from personal experience and he was stating he would never work for a campaign again because he could not take the financial risk. Though he was never charged with a crime, he was only called in as a witness, he said his life, his financial well-being has been ruined. He hears similar stories of how some scientists have ended up losing a prestige position, a job that all agreed they were doing very well, but being fired because they dared to consider evidence that seemed to clearly point to design and intelligence in the midst of the workings of nature. Sometimes just being a Christian or espousing godly values can make you a target of ridicule. Recently, a former Miami Dolphins cheerleader has been in the news because she has filed a formal complaint against the team saying she was bullied due to her faith and her private intent to remain a virgin till her marriage. Throughout our nation, we see similar settings on several fronts where numerous God-pleasing virtues that once were honored and respected are now instead mocked, whether it's in culture, in movies, by the media, and academia. Right now, when somebody tries to say something positive about marriage or family values, they are often going to be openly mocked, whether it's in Twitter or wherever it might be, ridiculed and chosen as someone to be attacked and slandered. Because you see, in the minds of many folks, it seems right now to say something positive about marriage or such, such values, mar the value of marriage and, and family values, they take that as an attack on something that they're instead espousing, and so away they go. In the play Fiddler on the Roof, Tevya, the milkman, as a Jewish peasant, contends with the discrimination that was experienced by his people. And he says to the Lord, I know we are the chosen people, but sometimes couldn't you choose somebody else? For all the difficulties, for all the troubling times, for all the many challenges and temptations that beat against us in our walk with Jesus as our promised Messiah, our Savior and Lord, for all those times when we are tempted to say, you know what, Lord, this, this stuff and this work and stuff, it's just not worth the price. It's just, I'm not, I, Lord, you're just asking too much. They, they don't want to hear it, so I'm just going to go hide in my little corner. I'm going to retreat into my, my little, you know, home, whatever it might be. In all those times, 
We read where Jesus is saying to his disciples, including us today, for such times as this, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. We got a lot of things going on and people trying to accomplish a lot of different things. Except for those things that are for the Lord and for his purposes, it's all going to eventually all fade away. But what we do for the Lord, what is done to his praise and glory, that remains. That will abide. Dear people of God, though you may be facing tough times, though you may have been tempted to give up on being active in your faith life and walk with Jesus, though you may have felt like the people who are mentioned in Malachi 3, verses 13 and 18, where God's people openly wonder if it's vain and worthless to serve God. What's the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? Now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape but then we read on in verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This Lord, the one and only God, our Lord and Savior, this day encourages us to be of good cheer even in the face of the troubles and trials confronting us. Yes, you may be tempted to just retreat and hide yourself from the spiritual battles surrounding us all. Surrounding us as we strive to live and share the hope and the promise that is ours in Jesus and that is offered to all in Jesus. Dear people of God, in our text this day, we read that in Christ you are chosen and appointed to be loved. In Christ you are chosen and appointed that your joy may be full. In Christ you are chosen and appointed to be friends of God. In Christ you are chosen and appointed to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. It's not a maybe, it's not a might be, it's not a, well, if you try really hard and stuff, then, you know, then maybe you're kind of, kind of get on that chart of God's beloved children. No! God has already made his choice. He has already chosen to love you and to be your friend. Remember your baptism. Remember God's promises to you. Remember the words of absolution already spoken to you by our Lord through his word. Truly, what a friend we have in Jesus. Listen again to the words of our gospel reading this night. As my father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. In his word to us this day, in our baptism, in the absolution, in his holy supper that we're going to receive in a little bit, God makes clear his commitment, his choice concerning us. The only question is, what will our response be? Oh, we know the temptations, we know the pressures, we know what we're being tempted to do or not do as our response. But God's made his choice his commitment clear, what will be our response? The response that God desires of us, us whom he has already chosen to befriend and save in Jesus, the response he asks of us in his word this night is that we remain in his love, keep his commandments, and love one another. God chose us in love and grace without any merit or worthiness in us. Our being chosen in Christ comes from God's love for us. Like Jesus explained to Nicodemus in John 3, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For what purpose were we chosen? For what purpose does God love us and bless us? 
to love. We are chosen in love to love, to love each other as our Lord has first loved us. And so yes, sometimes that love is going to be challenged. But they're so different, Lord. Guess what? They or somebody else is probably saying the same thing about you. And yet our Lord says to us, love one another. We all have a place. We all have a purpose within his kingdom, within his family. In Jesus, we are given a reason for joy. Our Lord tells us he wants our joy to be complete. In Jesus, we have his love, God's love. In Jesus, we can show God's love and concern for others. As followers, disciples of Jesus, we can share God's love. We can love one another as he has first loved us. We read in the last verse of our text, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Think he's trying to get something across to us? Do you think God's people of all generations and all seasons need to hear these words? Yes. Do we here at Trinity need to hear these words? Yes. And it starts with, as I have first loved you. The Lord is saying, I already love you here at Trinity. I already love you and your different families and your, as individuals. That's already been declared. Now love one another. Whether it's the declaration of our love and appreciation for our former church secretary, Jolene, as we recognize and show our appreciation for her years of service here at Trinity this coming Sunday on May 13th. Not tomorrow. Don't come tomorrow. You can try, but um, I had a tough enough time just getting through the traffic this, this afternoon. Um, or whether it's the love and care that we show to our mothers and fathers who are still living on the coming Mother's Day and then later Father's Day. We can, as God's people, make a choice that is pleasing to Him. He's already chosen us. He's already made us part of His family. In His power, in His love, we can do these things. But it's not easy. So? But, but it's... But this effort isn't always appreciated. Did everybody appreciate what Jesus was doing for them as he walked in this earth? No. But as he has first loved us, we're going to love one another. And we're going to love that world around us in the best way we know how as the people of God. We can choose to love one another as God has first loved us. It may not always be easy. We are different people. We often see things differently. But we can in Christ. Margaret, I got to share this. Margaret had popped up. Oh, no. I got to share this. I so loved what we were able to say. And you know, I think you know exactly what I'm going to Margaret and I, we're different people. Okay, it's just, and when we get talking, it seems like we always end up finding something we disagree on. Am I right? The other day, what did we have? We had a conversation, talked quite a while, and we didn't disagree about anything, did we? She's just shaking her head. She's, she's, she is not getting verbally involved in this. Okay. But anyway, we are different people. We often see things differently. But we can, in Christ, choose to see one another as Jesus sees them, as blessed and redeemed children of God in Christ Jesus. And if that is how Jesus sees them, then that is how we can choose to see them and we can choose to see one another in the same way. Go and live in the assurance of God's love. God made the choice for you in Christ Jesus that you might know and reflect his love. But even when you stumble and even fall, even when you are miserably and frankly a terrible excuse for a Christian, still you are loved. Still God is working to heal and restore you and encourage you. That in Jesus, even in the face of things that are tearing you down, in Jesus your life and hope will be restored and your joy, yes your joy, may be full.
as we remember this and as we go forward as individual Christians and as Christian families, as an evangelical Lutheran confessional Christian congregation, as we journey forward in our campaign, as we journey forward in our ministries, in our service of compassion and outreach, in all of this, as God's faithful and forgiven children of faith, we bear fruit that will last. As souls are nurtured in Christ Jesus and his love, fruits bearing fruit that will last. As souls come to know Jesus as their Savior, bearing fruit that will last. As souls, as people by God's grace and power trusting in Jesus, eventually are called to the eternal home to be with Jesus, truly fruit that will be last. People who will welcome us one day when we arrive there in heaven. Such is the promise that is ours in Jesus. Amen. Now may that peace that passes all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to all eternity. Amen. Before we continue, though, with the rest of the service, we've got a little insert there. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time with it. I really encourage you to take a look at it. You don't have to fill in any blanks. I filled them all in for you already, but let's go through it. It's the white insert. It's, it's one of the 58 pieces of paper in front of you, okay? Gifting to serve, growing, caring, reaching out, making a difference in Christ, knowing he has first declared his love for us. Each of us, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If you're still looking for it, it looks like this, okay? It's white with a lot of words on it. Okay, that narrows it down by about what? One third? Anyway, eternal encouragement. 2 Thessalonians 2. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. So what are the barriers? We know about barriers of being unable to forgive, holding on to resentments. We know about those. Another one is this in Luke 12. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. The false solution is this, that earth is our home. Grace truth number four, heaven, not earth, is my home. And then I put the words look up because, you know, to look up those passages there about, you know, we're pilgrims, strangers, they're ambassadors representing our heavenly country, our citizenship is in heaven. And then it was like, duh, but also that a little note, good advice. What? Look up what? To heaven, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Grace, truth number five, God calls us to live for eternity, not for the present. You got some other verses there you can read on your own. Giving is the great antidote to materialism. Always remember where true joys are to be found in Jesus. As we're going to sing a little bit later, I hope we get to it during the communion. I'm but a, no, as we sing in one hymn, um, I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Such is the choice that God has made for us in Jesus. In Jesus, we are his sheep. In Jesus, we have cause for joy and celebration that is full, that has no end. Even when those dark, troubling days confront us, abide in Jesus' love. Celebrate, live, share his love. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to stand and join me in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of life, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by
Our worship continues as we gather our tithes and offerings to the glory of God. You may be seated. pray together in Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. O Lord, Alpha and Omega, we acknowledge that you hold us in all things in your good hands. When we become overwhelmed, help us to trust that you are always good and that you are at work to accomplish your purposes in our lives. Grant us faith in Jesus who has overcome sin, death, and the devil for our salvation. Grant us the fullness of joy that comes from abiding in your love, Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. God who makes all things new as our risen Lord Jesus has overcome the corrupt systems of this world. We ask you to renew what has been broken by greed, lust, and pride. In both the public and private sectors, rejuvenate systems of government, commerce, health care, industry, and service that people may become valued more than profit or power. By your grace and spirit, please continue healing the brokenness of individual people at every level of our societies in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, who is trustworthy and true, you give us pastors to speak your word on your behalf. Grant faithfulness to these men that they may serve as under the cross, ever pointing others toward the Savior. Likewise, visit the sick, especially this day. We ask you, O Lord, to be with Ida Musman as she is hospitalized at Brian East. We ask you, Lord, to be with Bill Plotz as he is again hospitalized at Brian West. We pray, Lord, you be with Lyle Middendorf as he'll be undergoing surgery for cancer on May 8th. We ask you, Lord, to be with others who are battling cancer, Fran Kniep, Helen Miller, and Kareen Bartles. We ask you, Lord, to be with the many, many, many who are on our prayer list and whom we name before you in our heart. We ask you, Lord, to be with those who are in re rehab, Bill Wood and Ron Dennert and others we name before you. We pray, Lord, that you would grant healing and, str and strength according to your holy and gracious will. We ask you, Lord, to be with all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Visit them with your love and tender mercies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The beginning and the end, you, the Alpha and the Omega, you hold the past, the present, and the future. We give you thanks for our loved ones and for all the saints who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Grant us faith to follow Jesus during our days of pilgrimage and bring us at last to your kingdom where you dwell with the saints in unapproachable light. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And Lord God, we ask you to be with all who mourn past losses. Grant them your peace and comfort. Lord, we pray that you be with Jolene as she transitions into her new home and place of employment near to her roots and family and family members. Guide our plans for her farewell this coming Sunday on May 13th. Help us as a congregation to properly show our appreciation for her many dedicated years of service here at Trinity. Lord, we pray also that you be with all those who are celebrating anniversaries. Lord, we pray that you be with Mark and Lisa Van Buren as they're celebrating their 30th. Leroy and Clara Aiden as they're celebrating their 47th. Harold and Linda Monismith as they're celebrating their 53rd anniversary. Ross and Karen Johnson, 49 years. John and Maria Swan... Swankara, uh, 32 years. Brandon and Kristen Powell, 16 years. Eric and Alyssa... Eric and Alyssa uh, for their 11 years, and James and Kelly Best, their fifth wedding anniversary. And to this list, Lord, we would also add Jesse and Rebecca, who will be married Monday. Keep these families, keep these couples in your care and protection. Grant them, Lord, continued years and days together in your love and grace, and help them and all of our families, Lord, be a picture of your love, your care, your compassion, not only to one another, but also to the world around us. Lord, we pray also that you would bless the work and decisions of our campaign, Gifting to Serve. May all gifts be given in thankful joy to you, O Lord. Guide and bless our call process. Prepare the hearts of your people and prepare the hearts of the pastor that you have already chosen for us, preparing him and his family. Help us in all things to do your will and give continually give you praise and glory. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear people of God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Dear people of God, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, look upon you with his favor, and give you peace. Amen. This time I invite the congregation to be seated. We got just a couple of quick announcements. couple of things first of all we got the prayer vigil on friday you've got a card inside that you can sign up for it you can sign up for that for a certain hour whatever time of prayer even if you're not able to be here um, you can still and that's what sue and i need to do is we're going to be with family on that day on sunday may 13th coming up between the services we've got a special recognition for jolene coming up uh, for many ser years of service here at trinity we really want to encourage everybody to be here for that also on Sunday, May 20th, between the services, we've got a call meeting that starts. It's two uh, candidates are being presented. Uh, it's, on, it's part of in the green news there for you. Uh, definitely something for us to be keeping in our prayers. Our Wednesday services have been going over a month now. This last Wednesday, we had 36 people uh, at our Wednesday night service at the school. And then finally, there's a giving update. And again, we're just getting started with this campaign, but uh, of 13, 19 pledges, giving units coming in so far, uh, the update, and we'll continue to give these updates as we go forward, uh, already counts, amounts to $130,632. Uh, and again, that's, we're just getting started and that's there. And if you think of the 80,000 of folks who gave earlier before the campaign really started for the repair of the tower if you think of the matching that is uh, been pledged from the foundation of 112,500 to cover that part of the cost put that all together that's all part of the numbers that we have uh, what our target is we already have three hundred and twenty three thousand one hundred thirty two dollars 
committed uh, to this particular ministry, and we're just getting started. It's truly something to rejoice in and celebrate. And if you get a chance, you need to see the video of the couple. They're not even members of Trinity, but they're children. Uh, their child goes to our school. What a presentation. And I'm forgetting, it's... I can't, I'm, I can't do their name justice right now. Molly and... Chris and Molly, and I'm not even going to try that last name yet, but uh, wow, what a presentation uh, that they gave, and their excitement for the school, and how we got school parents getting this information to their family members across our nation, because they know they want to be a part uh, of this too, for, for the school and the great things they're hearing about our school. Truly, much to celebrate. Our closing hymn for us this evening, remembering that we are God's people, whom He has chosen, whom He has declared. If you haven't picked up your packet yet for the Gift to Conserve campaign, we got the rest of them back here to so stop at the information desk at Conserve. Thank you. I knew there was something you were standing for there, Brian. Thank you. And uh, you got those packets and stuff back there. That'll save uh, folks who otherwise have to try to figure out how to get that packet to you. So if you haven't gotten your packet yet, please pick up that up after the service. We continue with our closing hymn.